स्टार्ट होने में चाहिए तो साउंड के पक्षी very good morning to everyone uh, this is shubhranil saha and i welcome everyone on today's webinar so thank you everyone for joining us and encouraging us to bring up more uh, webinars and so before uh, starting today's webinar again i would like to briefly introduce about our organization because we have many new Uh, participants with us today who have joined us for the first time so uh, basically the indian geotechnical society is an organization which aims in promoting the prospects scope and research ideas of geotechnical engineering professors from iits nits and uh, various reputed uh, institutes of our uh, country then research scholars students and all and industry experts are in part of this organization Now the Indian Geotechnical Society has many local chapters across several cities of India. The IGS Silchar chapter is one of those. Now to include students and extend its motive and vision, the IGS has advised its local chapter to establish a student chapter. IGS Silchar student chapter was inaugurated on 15th of March 2019 uh, at NIT Silchar. Uh, till now we have organized uh, many activities uh, and events from our organization which are basically related to geotechnical engineering and uh, uh, this time we have come up with another another different topic which is uh, although not related to geotechnical engineering but uh, at this moment of time is Uh, the prime is the prime import is prime importance to every human being so in solidarity to fight against the novel corona virus we have come up with this webinar uh, now we all know that for a developing country like india the economic activities must also be balanced along with the healthcare and medical emergency so the government has decided to abate the lockdown gradually and allow people to get back to their work, work. in this webinar we aim to promulgate certain guidelines and practice in day to day life by abiding to which people can ensure their safety and also carry on their work essential for their livelihood so we are very uh, glad and proud to say that dr dhrubajyoti pal a renowned physician from silchar has agreed to join our initiative uh, at present he is practicing internal medicine and clinical nephrology in silchar and he is also actively engaged in many charitable activities so i am sure we today we all will gain uh, very valuable uh, suggestions from dr dhrubajyoti pal so without any further delay i would like to request dr dhrubajyoti pal to please carry for uh, carry on this webinar thank you thank you shubhani good morning everybody ladies and gentlemen I feel really honored and highly privileged to be present virtually amongst the distinguished faculty members and all the brilliant students of NIT Shilchar, and also having the opportunity to make you aware of novel coronavirus and the strategy to live with this COVID-19, which is a highly communicable and the infectious disease, and this. has drastically affected the daily life of everyone in the society since the beginning of the year 2020 now this ongoing unprecedented covid-19 pandemic has wreaked havoc as the new virus rages across the continent affecting almost 213 countries crippling the healthcare system in different countries and also destroying the global economies that is come in its way now after analyzing the current scenario and the gravity of the situation i am of the opinion that it is high time that each and every citizen should behave sensibly 
with a great deal of responsibility by bringing a radical change in the lifestyle and the day to day uh, activities which may be continued for a prolonged period of uh, time to come ahead now to speak the real truth it's quite obvious from the current situation that our existing healthcare system and the government alone will not be able to tackle the covid-19 storm successfully without the cooperation and active participation of each and every citizen of the society as it has now become a community asset <clears throat> till the last century we had remarkable advances in the treatment and management of this infectious diseases with uh, the advent of antibiotics antivirals and also the application of vaccines and that has greatly altered the landscape of the human health but even with all the advances of the 20th century infectious disease continue to represent a formidable challenge because of emergence of a series of new viruses last few because we have seen hiv and aids sars one or severe acute respiratory distress syndrome one in 2002 mars or the middle east respiratory syndrome severe bat please remember these two viruses sars one and mars these are very important in context of covid 19 and we have also seen the emergence of zika virus nipa virus ebola virus and last year we also see the swine flu virus this h1n1 influenza causing a mini pandemic and it all, all of this resulted in a dire impact on the global health now all of you will be surprised to learn that around 16% of cancers are now documented to be associated with chronic viral infection Now, interestingly, normal human beings are colonized and studied with 50 trillion bacteria as well as countless viruses and fungus. And taken together, they outnumber the total human cells in our body by 10 times. And they all reside in our skin, mouth cavity, the digestive tract, the airways, and also the female genital tract. Please don't get scared. because all this microbial common cells provide us with a myriad of benefits from aiding in the metabolism to shaping the immune system of our body so there can be our enemies and there can be our friends as well and the fear of weaponizing the pathogenic microorganisms for bioterrorism is ever present and poses a potential enormous threat to the public health now let me tell you one another interesting fact if a virus is less contagious in transmission then the disease produced by it is very lethal and with a very high death rate whereas a lethal less lethal disease is produced by a highly contagious virus spreading rapidly from person to person like this covid 19 as you find it the infected almost 70 to 80 percent do not develop any symptoms but they unknowingly spread the virus in the society it has been documented there a single person can transmit the covid 19 virus to a 52 number of contact the covid-19 virus enters our body through the respiratory tract it lodges in the nasal epithelial cells and comes with the breath or sneeze or cough of an infected person who is usually a silent carrier and the the virus then starts multiplying in the upper respiratory tract the nose and the throat and may also trickle down to the lungs resulting in 
uh, the various symptoms depending on involvement of the upper and lower respiratory tract. As you see, that mild cough, sneezing, fever, melee for the upper respiratory tract, and uh, little pneumonia along with fever, and some can have nausea, diarrhea, etc. Occasionally, also, we have observed loss of smell and taste sensation on few cases. The virus starts shedding from the nose with the breath, cough, and sneeze, starting from the day two of infection through aerosols containing the contaminated micro droplets. 70 to 80%, as I've said, remains asymptomatic. 10 to 15 percent develops mild to moderate symptom, and the virus gets cleared up of its own with formation of a protective antibody. Only a subset of population, particularly the elderly, and with pre-existing chronic diseases like hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, chronic kidney disease, bronchial asthma. Bron chronic bronchitis, obesity, and cancer, and also a subgroup of immunocompromised people are highly vulnerable, amounting to 5 to 10 percent of the infections, and develop a COVID pneumonia with a respiratory distress and end up in ICU with ventilation with a very high mortality rate. It is only in the 5 to 10 percent subset of the population. But overall mortality is around 1 to 3 percent in different regions. Before the appearance of symptoms, after getting infection, the person starts transmitting the disease to the contact. Simply by talking, can produce 2,600 tiny droplets per second with a rate of 200 viral particles per minute. And with cough and sneeze, it can be around 200 million viral particles which are shed in the aerosol. So, for effective transmission of infection of the virus, the product of the concentration of the virus in the aerosol and the duration of exposure is the determinant factor. And also important is the space, because closed air environment with poor ventilation and rooms, there is a very high risk for transmission of the virus. <clears throat> now, the next source of infection, other from person to person, are the objects of the articles which can get contaminated with the viral particles through touch of the infected person or from the spitting or dropping of the aerosols. And we call this formal. And this may play an important role in the transmission of the, particularly in the setting of community transmission. Recently, the USA Center of Disease Control, CDC, labeled this formite to be of low risk for transmission of disease. Though a large number of clinical trials are underway, the curative treatment and the strategy and the definitive preventive vaccine, both women and Lucy, at present, you'll be surprised to know that since uh, this December 19, when the COVID-19 emerged, and during the last five months, around 23,000 research papers on COVID-19 are published in different medical literature. And the papers yet to be published in the pipeline are doubling every three weeks. And if we cannot flatten the rising COVID curve, there could be an estimated 50 million papers by the end of the year. It actually just replaced the intrusive. Many more informations on COVID-19 remains to be explored, and the medical fraternity is desperately right, trying to gather more knowledge on COVID-19 as it is a novel virus. Now, we can assume that the COVID-19 pandemic is here, and it is here to stay with us until a significant population, maybe around 70% in the community, immunity 
with formation of antibody in the blood after getting the infection and clearing the virus from the body. And that's how the heart immunity is established in the community. Now the majority, 70% population with this antibody will now shield and protect the remaining 30% uh, minority population without infection as the virus now gets difficult in targeting a new host for survival or to create the disease. And that's how there is decline in the rate of infection. So thus we can say the hard immunity is basically a statistical immunity. Of course, by mass vaccination, also the hard immunity is established. In December 19, the novel coronavirus of the SARS-1 virus was in China in the Cuban city uh, from patients suffering from unusual pneumonia and not responding to conventional therapy. By mid-2020, January, the genome of the new virus was explored. On genetic sequences, it was revealed that the virus to be closely linked to the SARS-1 virus of the severe acute respiratory virus of 2002, which was detected again from China from some pneumonia cases with high mortality. But in that SARS-1 virus, there was no such person-to-person -person transmission as that that virus was less contagious. Now, it is a well-known fact that the virus has the capability to undergo a genetic reassortment in its, some of its genes or genetic shift or as we call it a mutation. And that can develop greater human-to-human -human transmittability with the potential to create a global pandemic. Now, the, we also know that in this diverse world, many microorganisms, including viruses, thrive from different animals, as genesis, as you call it. Now, adaptation of an avian or swine virus by mutation to infect the humans has already been documented, and last year we have seen the swine flu virus of H1N1, uh, which created a mild pandemic. Now, in India, as of now, we already have eight different strains of COVID-19 virus in different regions of our country with variable character in its viral sense. And the first, the uh, disease of the first case of COVID-19 was detected in China in late uh, January this year. As far as management of this disease is concerned, it depends on different stages of the disease, upper respiratory, lower respiratory, and the severity of the disease. The management basically depends on quarantining the individual, isolation, hospital treatment with supportive care is provided as no specific treatment is available at present. Some of the intervals and vaccines are already on trial in different countries. And we also have in our country a specific protocol for treatment of the COVID-19 disease. Now let's enter into the last but the most important segment, the preventive strategy at individual level. The risk reduction of getting infected should be the axiom of driving each and every individual in the society. Now, please consider and treat each and every individual you meet in the society as a potential asymptomatic carrier of COVID-19 infection, and also every surface you touch as potential contaminated with the virus. And this is to be remembered as long as the pandemic persists. Please try to be rational uh, in changing in your lifestyle. Now, most important is avoid close proximity with persons you meet and always maintain a six feet radius distance. Avoid greetings like hugging and handshaking, etc. Please wear a three layer mask while in outdoors. 
to protect yourself and also your surrounding people and the mask should be fitted properly covering your face particularly the nose and the mouth please sanitize your hands with 70 to 80% alcohol containing liquid or common hold common show rub at least for a one minute particularly while in outdoor maintain the personal etiquette while sneezing coughing spitting use tissue papers or handkerchief avoid non essential travel visiting restaurants pubs and multiplex attending marriage and parties and social gathering keep your living place well ventilated continue your physical exercise as usual can go for walk and jogging in open space with low density people eat slightly less because physical activity is becoming less nowadays because of this lockdown add citrus fruits containing vitamin c in a diet chart death rate is only 1 to 3% avoid mental stress and anxiety practice yoga and be mentally positive and strong now how you disinfect and how you maintain your hand hygiene covid line 19 can live on different surfaces ranging from 2 to 4 hours to as long as 5 days copper lowest survival for the virus on the 4 hours aluminum around 2 to 8 hours as you find in soda cans and tin foils commonly used in day to day life shipping box and cardboard only one day plastic and stainless steel two to three days wooden furniture and decking four days ceramics glasses dish pottery mugs the drinking glass mirrors and window panes jewelry and metallic door knobs and five days in newspaper and magazine it can stay for five days provided it is contaminated with high density virus this is very unusual to find it the virus does not seem to be spread through food and water please remember now the authorized disinfectant products are sodium hypochlorite solution which is available in the market commonly as ready made 5 to 10% solution and you can make in your house with bleaching powder and water this sodium hypochlorite solution contains acetic chlorine which kills the virus and alcohol based disinfectants usually 70 to 80% ethanol isopropyl alcohol you can mix 25 ml of this 75% alcohol with 100 ml of water to make the hand sanitizer Now, while surfacing the, while cleaning the surface is containing virus, neutral detergents or commonly available virucidal disinfectants can be used. Apart from your one percent sodium hypochlorite solution, you can prepare it easily with three tablespoon of twenty percent active bleaching powder, which is commonly available in the market, mixing it with two liters of water. so 3 tablespoon of bleaching powder with 2 liters of water is sufficient to make 1% of sodium hypochlorite solution which is commonly used as a disinfectant textiles regular laundry detergents are enough for cleaning the clothes and linen low temperature cycling with bleach or laundry detergent also can be used or 90 degree hot water cycling also can be used equipments and uh, instruments also can be sanitized to sodium hypochlorite solution as i mentioned toilets are also also to be sanitized to 1% sodium hypochlorite solution now the ventilation of the rooms and space is also equally important to reduce the concentration of the virus thriving in the air in aerosol rooms functioning with negative pressure or 1 to 3 hours of fresh air ventilation is required 
high efficiency particulate air filtration HEPA filter filtration for building where windows cannot be opened to be used. Temporary HEPA filters can be placed on the vents and exhaust and portable HEPA filters are also available which can be put in different corners of the room. Now you, we have a definite blood donation protocol during this COVID-19 pandemic and persons who should refrain from blood donating for a duration of four weeks are the persons who have fully recovered from COVID-19, those with possible direct exposure to a confirmed positive case and those who have traveled from areas with ongoing community transmission of COVID-19. And for pre-exposure profilaxis, at present, no agent is given before an exposure is known to be effective for prevention. Clinical trials, although are undergoing in different, with different agents like hydroxychloroquine and few HIV protease inhibitor drugs. Now, our national test force recommends the use of hydroxychloroquine only for the high risk groups or populations, those who are involved with uh, giving care to the COVID-19 patients or exposed to this virus. Asymptomatic household contact of confirmed COVID positive case can take 400 milligram of hydroxychloroquine twice a day for day one, and then continue 400 milligram once weekly for three consecutive weeks. This is for a asymptomatic household contact person from a COVID confirmed COVID positive case. And for the healthcare personnel, or even for the police personnel, or security personnel who are exposed to the confirmed COVID positive cases, they will continue same dose, but for seven weeks. 400 milligrams twice, day one, and 400 milligrams one week per, per week for seven consecutive weeks. This always contraindicated this drug for children below the 15 years persons having retinopathy, hypersensitivity to this drug. Now, my experience with this hydroxychloroquine is that we are using for a long time for different autoimmune diseases, this hydroxychloroquine, and everyday dose of 400 to 200 milligrams. Plenty of my patients are taking it for years together, but I have not seen any side effects. Although we screen the eye for retinopathy. And another interesting study has come from Italy recently. They have seen the those who are on COVID-19, uh, those who are on this hydroxychloroquine drug for autoimmune diseases, around 59,000 patients taking this drug for prolonged duration. And that's, after study, they found that out of these 59,000 cases on HCQ cases daily, only 19 mild cases of COVID-19 was found to be positive and not a single case of death. Now, to summarize, COVID-19 is a highly communicable new respiratory virus belonging to the coronavirus family, potential to spread silently from person to person in the community, Everybody is susceptible to, to this infectious disease, but hopefully the disease produced is not so lethal. And the majority, 70 to 80 percent of the affected people, behave like silent carriers, apparently healthy, and clear the virus by formation of the antibodies. But only a subset of population, as I mentioned, 5 to 10 percent, the elderly with multiple comorbidities are at high risk to land up with pneumonia. And that overall death rate of COVID-19 has I've said one to three percent. Most importantly, the virus can be transmitted in the incubation period of one to 14 days. And in 15 to 20 percent of the cases, they are mild to moderate response to conservative treatment. 
and may not require hospitalization even and by two weeks they recover only symptomatic therapy is provided as no curative drug is available and the vaccines are still awaited although on the trials has been started we are expecting maybe in the september october to come up with market for use but we don't know how successful it will be so the bottom line is that the prevent prevention is better than cure so take him take home message from my side is s m s but s stands for social distancing for six feet m stands for masking the face with a three layer mask and the uh, third s stands for sanitizing your hands with soap or alcohol based sanitize so please strictly follow this sms particularly during your outdoor activity i can only wish stay safe and live a healthy life till the pandemic is over now i would like to before i conclude i express my heartfelt thanks to dr ashim kumar de the senior faculty of nit shilcha for inviting me and also encouraging me to deliver the speech to this webinar thank you all everybody for the patient hearing and providing a valuable talk now i would love to have queries from your side for uh, lively interaction uh am i audible to you sir hello sir am i audible to you uh hello sir uh first of all thank you very much uh thank you for this wonderful session so sir uh, our at the uh, participants have lots of questions and uh, they are interested to ask you lots of questions yes, i'll yes. read it out one by one so it will uh, sure, kindly sure. please answer answer them one by one sir so our okay. first okay okay fine first question is uh, uh, okay uh, it is from trina das it is is n covid 19 yeah. a c r i s t r uh, CAS9 modification product has any of the papers given that idea i could not follow uh, please repeat again uh, please repeat the, again i could not follow okay sir so the question is uh, by tina das it is is n covid 19 a cri spr yeah. uh, cas9 modification product has any of the papers given that idea well i have already told that there are different mutated strains of this virus and in our country till date eight new strains has been detected in different parts or regions of our country and we have many strains the china strain the us strain and like this okay now what about the strain t it, it is definite that it has mutated from sars one virus which came in the year uh, 2002 the severe acute respiratory distress syndrome virus it belongs to the corona virus family and this viruses are well known to get mutated by some uh, genetic assortments in few of the gene okay thank you thank you uh okay i hope uh, the answer is clear to her so uh, sir the next question is uh, is mortality it is by arnay kumar ghosh is mortality rate or effect or affecting rate high for a positive a positive blood group people or is it a myth it's a myth it's a myth it's too early to comment because studies are going on i already told it everyone is vulnerable to this viral infection 
and only a subset of the population, particularly the elders, are highly vulnerable because of existing comorbidity. Number one. Number two, we have also seen that a person has recovered at the age of 90, 95, even after crossing 100. We have also seen that younger persons are also dying of COVID-19. But the, these are anecdotal. The percentage is very, very less. Okay? Am I uh, clear? Okay. Okay, I hope it is clear to Mr. Anoy Kumar Ghosh. So, so the next question is by Divya Darshini Das. Uh, if anyone yeah. having neuro problem, uh, having surgery recently with one year, Will yeah. end COVID-19 yeah. affect easily or not? Well, I have already told the chronic kidney disease patients are vulnerable. Right? Because the chronic kidney disease itself is a immunocompromised state. And now, if you define chronic kidney disease, a urological patient, probably urological patient means if it's elderly, maybe unless prostate with obstructive urethropathy, undergone surgery for prostate, or maybe some stone disease. The vital question is how, what is the status of the renal function? If the renal function is normal, the risk is low. If the renal function status is not normal or it is compromised, then the person is vulnerable. Right? The preventive measures remains equal for all sector of patients, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, Next okay. question, please. Uh, again, question is from Mr. Kesha. That is same like, are A positive people more vulnerable to COVID-19? I think you have answered, sir. Sir, uh, second is that, that uh, again, the Anwar Kumar goes, what? Okay. Second is last, the next one is by what is uh, by Anoy Kumar Ghosh. What is the specification of masks which is effective? Well, see, it depends on the setting. For a hospital setting where the COVID 19 patient density is very high, so in those, you always have to wear three layer masks, number one. Number two, in a hospital setting, the mask is not enough. It requires face saving shield. You have to protect your eyes because the virus rarely enters through the conjunctiva also. Right? Which I actually didn't mention. This is a pair. But during, during procedures, the surgery, the blood can spill out and you can get thrush of blood in your face and eyes. That's why this face protective devices are used. So the most important factor is how it is tied in the face. Must be well covered the nose and the mouth tightly. Right? And depending on this uh, again the environment, you see, if it is a small room, poor ventilation, then the, obviously the density of virus will be high. Whereas in the open space, when you go out, the density of virus is very low. But if you come across a person, COVID-19 person, uh, shedding the virus, then you have to be very careful with your mask. But what I have found uh, in my observation, as the lockdown is gradually withdrawing in different phases, the people, they only put the mask and with laxity of this uh, relaxation of this uh, lockdown phase, the tightness of the mask in the face started loosening even to the level of below the nose and mouth. Sometimes I find it hanging in the throat even. So the three layer mask is very important. And even it is not available, in the rural areas, they cannot afford. They can use any clothing, but usually it should be three layers. And so that even if the virus enters, it is very low density, and the chances of getting uh, lethal disease is very, very low. 
okay Next okay please. sir the, again the next uh, so one thing i would like to ask you personally related to this mask sir sir i have read in many places that uh, people who uh, have started like they are doing morning exercises like uh, they are jogging and mon- uh, morning walk so i have read in yeah. news that uh, uh, they started to they resume doing their morning exercise using this uh, wearing this mask so certain people have uh, there were certain news that people has collapsed the hardest collapse during that so please sir yeah, inform yeah. everyone uh, that that, that makes you as dangerous so you see the exercises should be continued the place of exercise is very important if you are doing it in your house where you don't have a covid 19 patient then you can continue your exercise with out using the mask number 1 number 2 if you go for a walk in your vicinity of your house and if you find the density of people is very less that space is empty you can continue your exercise without mask but if you find that the person is coming and approaching you then you have to wear the mask other thinking that that person is potentially infected otherwise while exercising one should not wear it okay mask okay okay sir then uh, moving on to the next question uh, it is by kallol paul i uh, he has asked sir, are not these people less vulnerable to covid 19 well nice question because if you observe it is not only the north east my opinion it is the eastern india if you look at chatisgarh odisha these are not so rich states right these states also have jharkhand lower incidence of cases uh, like the north east now the north east is known for endemic areas of malaria since long long time the british era and the use of chloroquine was rampant even during my early life of my career of my medical profession i also faced malaria endemic in large scale in assam so it is possible theoretically that people do what on the hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine earlier they might be having a uh, different sort of uh, immunity to that virus but it is actually it is not so because we don't have study right now you you see this your northeast boys and girls they were serving in different states because we don't have uh, large scale industry and all so our young generation majority are working in different states so we have a huge influx of this young boys and girls they are entering and many of them are you are getting almost with us 300 3000 i think till yesterday so there are boys and girls so it is not that you are in north east and you are immune to them but the incidences of cases are low and probably the lethality is also low and it is yet to come the time is yet to come because we do, we have not gone through the genetic uh, uh, studies for our the which is rampant in our north and eastern state but it is sure and certain that we are in the beginning stage we didn't have any cases but once the people migrated from different parts we have start, uh, started getting cases the same is true for our country also till january mid part we didn't have any case in our country all the cases are transmitted from different countries and this story actually is, is true for the whole world because it started in one part of the uh, 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 continent and from that it started spreading to different countries because of ability to easy uh, communication and all and people are moving busy uh, every day they are moving morning to uh, night from one continent to another continent so that is actually mode of spread and it is highly contagious virus and it can enter from first infected person anyone so the sufferings 
is the important factor. The suffering to have, overall suffering to see in the younger people, they don't suffer more, uh, much more seriously except the elderly. Bearing a few, I've said you, that the immunocompromised po population, basically they are immunocompromised because of some diseases, any disease that they are, compromise your uh, immunity. And they are more vulnerable, they suffer more. But the percentage is very less. Okay. okay. Okay, so then addressing to the next question by Nirmala Das, how does this virus compare with SARS, MERS, influenza, and the common cold? If you compare, actually, SARS and MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, came actually the observable uh, infection of camel, also originated from the bats and rats. And the SARS also same thing. It originated from actually it's a zoonosis. Now, these all belong to the same family, right? Whereas, if you talk about H1N1 influenza, it is a swine flu virus, which, which actually caused a mild epidemic, uh, endemic the last year, 2019. So, all are originated from zoonosis. And by virtue of mutation or genetic assortment in the field of the genes of the virus, uh, they are actually uh, getting pathological or becoming pathogenic virus for human beings, right? So it is, we, we look for the origin actually and the family of the virus. Influenza virus is a different family and the source is swine. Whereas your uh, SARS, MERS and COVID-19, the source, this also you know, the source is the bats and uh, uh, COVID and other animals, right? But oh. if you talk about the lethality and the transmissibility, the transmissibility of COVID-19 is very high, lethality of the disease is very low. Whereas your cells and MERS belonging to that uh, family uh, of coronavirus, they are, although they belong to the same family, but the Lethality of the disease was very high, mostly to other than 40 to 50 percent, but the transmissibility of the disease was very low from person to person. Usually, those infected actually in the hospital setting or from this march from Tamil, Middle East, as you see, right? So, that's the basic difference in the disease produced and in the transmissibility and also in the genetic character. So basically, the genetic character it dictates its characteristic and the quality of the virus, how it's going to behave with the human, right? Okay, fine. So uh, coming to the next question, it is asked by Ms. Devnanda Dutta. Uh, some sources say that there might be no vaccine possible for COVID-19. Is it true? Well, <laughs> that's a million dollar question because our past experience also is like this almost more than 40 years now we don't have a vaccine against hiv right but even for recently emergent newer virus we find that we have vaccine even for ebola or other viruses as you see right so uh so it is a, it's a question, tricky question, and only time can say, the time will answer, no one can answer now. But I am very much hopeful that vaccine is going to come. The only thing is the time factor, it may be one and, uh, one and a half in year, half a year, uh, a virus you get for uh, use for vaccination. The time is very bad because the trials have already started and you, you cannot say by having a trial of three months or four months that it is full protected. It requires a long duration. So usually it is one year to 18 months, right? But I'm hopeful. Uh, so I have a question related yes. to this. Uh, like, uh, sure. We have read that uh, many sources say that within one or two months we might have a vaccine. By October we might have a vaccine. Or many trusted sources <laughs> say that it might take two years, one year. So, sir, practically, how much time does it take for a vaccine to develop and to reach out every common people? 
globally uh, you, you want to you are talking about the vaccine duration duration mainly sir suppose uh, what is the expected like well suppose if vac- see, if it, 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 it will be dictated by the it will be dictated by your hard immunity because it is estimated that the if around 70% of our population of the world gets infected then they are going to protect the remaining 30% of the population because the virus at the time it becomes difficult to get a new host to get infected and that's how the gradually it decays and and it goes away actually right and the infection rate also goes down so the duration of getting infected 70% of the population of your community uh it 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 it, it, will, it will again depends on you see the transmissibility of the virus so transmissibility of the virus is very very high so hard immunity we are expecting maybe as you told uh around 2 to 3 years it, it may be established right okay okay sir uh, one next it's question is from speculation okay sir the so next yeah. question is from kalol paul uh, can wearing specs act as a protection for entry of virus through eyes yes yes to some extent you see we wear goggles during surgeries and all even the eye to care so it is going to protect the virus is lodged in your specs now you have to take care of the specs and the mask because you must be carefully handling specs you must touch at the ear don't never touch the glass right mask don't uh, touch the front part of the mask always uh, hold the thread or the hook of the mask and then either you dispose or it, it, it's washable you can uh, apply detergent and all from on soap then keep it for one or two days in the sunlight and then you can reuse it also right so that basically will give little bit of protection to the eye but, but the infection transmission of the infection through the eye is very very uncommon it is these are the theoretically possible some cases have been reported right but common is through inhalation through the nose right with breath and respiration so mask is the playing the pivotal role here okay okay so so that means uh, so i i is not a uh, means uh, entry point for corona virus you might you are saying no it's an entry point but the chances uh, are very less not so high okay. no sorry very okay. less okay. maybe okay. They, uh, we don't have the statistic we don't but they, it is it is may be negligible actually it is what happens in medical side because even the anecdotal cases are reported and that get highlighted right it's like that but there are reports of cases transmission through eye right but from the environment very unlikely listed it uh, it occurs in a hospital setting with high density of virus in the environment in the room right in those cases it is possible splash of blood gush of blood uh, coming to the i mean the face and involving the eye and if it is not protected then it's possible so so another good question uh, which we have found by vivek kumar singh what is hard immunity and it is practically possible is it practically possible to occur in our country yeah why not previously also it happened in the globe and now also but the best hard immunity is through vaccination as we have eradicated smallpox the last case of more deadly smallpox reported in the mid 70s if i am not mistaken 74 75 1974 75 but by this time almost 90% of the population of the world was vaccinated with this, uh, against this virus smallpox virus so that is through vaccination now by acquiring the disease and clearing the virus high immunity is established it depends on the factor r0 the how many persons a virus can infect right 
and what is the time duration and depending on that there is a calculation and on that calculation it is presumed that for covid 19 at least 70% of the population should get this infection and it is possible because we are getting 70 to 80% of the cases are getting silent carrier and now what are the data we are dealing with now in our country or all over the world you don't know actually because you see we are maybe dealing with the tip of the iceberg because how many people are going going to test it is not possible right but you can know whether a person has got the infection and clear the virus and develop the antibody by doing the antibody test so these are actually undergoing in our country on uh, research basis not for this common people uh, to know uh, i mean uh, studies in common studies i mean large scale studies are not ongoing actually. so unless you go for a large scale study how much what percentage of people have been infected it is costly our country can bear it right so that's the vital question but it is expected it is, it is a highly transmissible disease so it is possible that 70% of the population is going to get infected and develop the antibody and they will they will protect the rest and that's the hard immunity and this basically i told is the statistical immunity right the mathematically calculated immunity okay so okay. Uh, so the next question is to uh, i think it's asked by civil key medicine uh, is lemon water and hot water effective to boost our immunity i think well i don't know <laughs> i can't comment about the hot water lemon water is fine lemon juice you know uh, this citrus fruit and it contains lots of vitamin c and vitamin c actually it is the effective agent to prevent viral infection in in use for long long time because in earlier days also when we didn't have any viral agent antiviral agent drug so vitamin c or the citrus fruits always been used in uh, during this epidemic and some people are having habit of taking uh, this uh, lemon with every day dishes right so hot water now hot water is see uh, it's running in the social media actually that you drink hot water you inhale steam and then you are protected from the virus i don't think it's going to play a major role right because uh, you see if this can kill uh, then people are getting very high temperature after this uh, uh, viral infection and that is actually a part of the disease but the disease progresses the support then many of cases are lost so hot water is uh, very than kind a of doubtful in my opinion if one can have suppose many people have upper respiratory symptoms of running nose and this uh, your uh, sinus problem or throat problem pharyngitis tonsillitis for them it is good to have warm gargle or steam inhalation right and for covid 19 one important uh, point to be remembered if somebody has got a running nose all of a sudden you know it is not covid 19 right it is not covid 19 because covid 19 never produces running nose usually stuffy nose there will be no discharge from the nose but from the nose the virus will be shed with the aerosol right Okay. Okay. An- another question by Miss Driti Paul and also by Doctor Hari Prasanna Paul. The same question. Uh, they say that uh, are vegetarians less vulnerable to COVID-19 infections? Some papers say so. <laughs> well, these are all I think hypothetical, right? So, for argument, I would say, although we don't have studies in our country, the in the metropolis, say Western India. Say, say the Gujarat and the, I mean Maharashtra. The majority of the people there are vegetarian. I I believe maybe more than fifty percent. Previously it was high, sixty seventy percent of the population are veg people. Now how can you say that you are getting higher number of cases from Maharashtra and Ahmedabad, 
सूरत गुजरात सो टू आर्गू एगेंस्ट दिस वेज एंड नॉट वेज दिस इज वेरी ट्रिटी एंड आई फील इट डज डिपेंड प्रोबेबली ऑन द डायटरी पैटर्न वेज एंड नॉन वेज एनी वन नॉन वेज वेज कैन बी वाउनरेबल टू दिस डिजीज ओनली थिंग इज द सबसेट ऑफ पॉपुलेशन एज आई टोल द इम्यूनो कॉम्प्रोमाइज and elderly is comorbid they are at high risk okay so one more okay. question i would like to ask i think this will be this will give a clear idea to all our viewers so now as we have seen that the lockdown is gradually opening up is it the government is now opening yeah. up the economic activities some of the food industry yeah. uh, it may be a five star hotel it may be a dominos or kfc outlet it yeah, might yeah, be a yeah, sir, yeah, yeah. fast food fast food stall at the roadside this is a big industry many yeah, people yeah. get em- Right, right, right. they are earning yeah. from this so is it a myth that we should avoid this uh, food so food from outside or is it safe if we take food like uh, we order it from outside a restaurant and take it from home is it safe completely safe or we might have a infection chance from there also see uh, you, you cannot say completely full to say it depends on many factors the place where the food is prepared right now you see you don't know the person who is preparing whether it is covid positive silent carrier or not that's the vital question and we also know that on aluminum foil it can persist for 2 to 8 hours right so if a person was having this in the kitchen right of that uh, food manufacturing kitchen and not using this universal procedure of masking the face while preparing the food and sneezing and all then it can the virus can uh, deposit on the aluminum foil from the aerosol right due to gravity and the the foil is contaminated but so food and water are told it is not but fast foods as you as you know that for building up your natural immunity it is not a good food right it is not a good food the now this crucial time period actually i would say to avoid this for the time being to build up your immunity with a natural homemade food fruits and vegetables right and so that's going to help to uh, build your immunity and the first food actually it will bring down your immunity right so it is the source for it is produced the carrier who is carrying it right so these are the factors but one can have it you can order and bring it from the if it is if you feel that place is safe you can bring it by order for home delivery but you maintain that tip i mean that way as i would have mentioned this sanitizing and all right okay okay sir okay thank you for the question i think we have cleared a lot of doubts for everyone so another question by vipin uh, cm uh, how much does the corona virus take toll on the body of a survivor i'm not hearing how much how much uh, does the corona virus take toll on the body of a survivor well again it depends on the age of the person whether the person has got comorbidities right and from point to view of kidney i can say because if the person has severe illness lethal pneumonia which causes a systemic inflammatory response of the whole body and becomes a multi organ involvement many of the organs recover completely but kidney in the organ after a acute insult of covid 19 and that person was having normal kidney function prior to the infection that person after recovery may come up with a reduced or compromised renal function 
so that can be the call on the kidney now as far as other organs are concerned it is well some we have seen some of the uh, rare cases has been reported to develop uh, this uh, disorders of the blood vessels in covid 19 right because it is uh, uh, found that a person young fellow has come with stroke severe means hemorrhage in the brain or heart attack and found to be covid positive right now whether covid has produced this or those are existing earlier in a silent manner in the body of the those person this is a very uh, million dollar question again but the autopsy findings from italy are coming out now and they say in the autopsy they could find large clots in inside the blood vessel of those covid death uh, patients now it is never known for a respiratory virus to invade the vascular system right it remain limited to the respiratory system and okay fine because of severe inflammatory response or accelerated response of the body against that uh, disease multi organ involvement was there right but the vascular involvement is not known but there are cases the covid 19 patient has developed a painful swollen digit and on autopsy there was found to be blood clot in the artery of that vest blood vessel of that uh, digit small digit right so it is possible it has been said that because those are found in a pneumonia case now do what happens in pneumonia the lung is injured the alveoli get blocked with fluid and other uh, inflammatory uh, chemical now if there is the injury in the i mean say the blood vessels of the lung and the capillary level it is possible because uh, you see the virus enters the cell through a specific receptor i have not told it actually so the nose in any cell it will get inside the cell through a specific receptor and there is the ace two receptor angiotensin converting enzyme two receptor now this receptor density is very high in the lung in the kidney right so this receptor are present in the capillary endothelial cell blood vessel small blood micro blood vessels of the lung so the virus if it can get access there it can enter the vascular endothelial cell very easily and it can go on invading and then once the vascular endothelial cell is involved then this phenomenon of coagulation disorder means the blood is running it is not supposed to get clotted you mean always the main fluid state but it gets clotted so microthrombosis are found in autopsy lung larger clots are found in various blood vessels in different parts of the body so this is still under studies now whether this respiratory virus which is never seen can invade the vascular system and result into the right uh, involvement of the vascular system and that's how your kidney and other organs can have a very high toll right okay next question please okay so we'll take sir two or three more questions then Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, next question is from uh, Mr. John. He is from Indonesia, and he says that uh, I want to ask: Is vitamin D, vitamin C, an activity for 15 minutes effective for your COVID? Well, see, regarding vitamin D, I would say last maybe one or two decades, it has been found that. Many persons, including the children, are deficient in vitamin D. In Western countries, Europe and America, they add vitamin D with the milk every day, right? For the processed milk or pasteurized milk. But in our region, you see, with enough sunlight, 
we were taught <laughs> during our student days, we need not worry about vitamin D because we have had sufficient sunlight around the year. But we are finding plenty of cases in our country, in our region, vitamin D deficient. And vitamin D has a very important role, other than uh, building up, uh, making a bone strong, and other role in the immunity and uh, in function of the cells of the uh, insulin producing and hormone producing cells. And so these, are, these areas are now going to get explored. But it is said vitamin D is beneficial and it is to be taken as, as a supplementary agent uh, in everyday diet, right? Or you can add, some people suggest, the Diabetic Society particularly of our country, they've suggested uh, to take vitamin D uh, regularly during this uh, COVID period, pandemic, right? So it is helpful. Uh, so the next question is by Osei Chaudhary. What is your opinion on the Ministry of Ayush suggesting the use of uh, arsenicium uh, album 30 for COVID-19? Well, <coughs> see, <laughs> I'm not the person to co comment on this. But I have faith on all system of uh, therapy, allopathy, homeopathy, Ayurvedic, Yunani, and so on, so on. Because these are existing for a long, long time because these are effective. That's why these are existing. But my, uh, some of my friends, we had a discussion. They told Arsenium 300 can be taken prophylactically. Arsenium also can be taken for treatment purpose. But for a qualified homeo doctor, maybe in a better position, to discuss this issue, but maybe helpful. Okay. But so I only know that. Uh, I, let, me, let me come from my point of view as a nephrologist. Okay. Okay, okay. drugs, many of the drugs contain heavy metals, right? So use of heavy metals for long duration has got some effect untoward effect on the kidney, right? There are many chronic kidney diseases that have been uh, found by which could not find the cause. And arsenic is one of the agents which was found. Uh, I don't know whether you know of moonshine uh, beer. Because in Australia, in one of, once upon a time, the beer was very famous. And it contained arsenic, right? Maybe. I think, because of contamination of the water, because, because of the production, this is a wrong back history. And in a particular region, right, the, those, uh, in those days, Munshan beer was used by the people, this kidney disease was found, became chronic, renal function was compromised, and ultimately found to be because of arsenic, chronic arsenic exposure, which is also present in uh, paints, commonly used paints also. So, but you know that uh, in homeopathy, the doses are in different, uh, different. Uh, I think the ideology, not like our uh, allopathy. So arsenium could be beneficial. Okay, okay. sir. We'll go with the last question, and for others, uh, if you have still any questions, we will provide a link. We will uh, you can ask the question. We will forward that to yes, 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 yes. and we will answer this later. So, yeah, we yeah, go with the last question. Time. It yeah. is uh, by Ms. Bandaru Pranitha. Earlier, it was said that rising temperature during summer will let the virus die. But why is the virus getting developed <laughs> even at the end of summer? See, it is not the question of the temperature, rising temperature. Basically, as a physician, when I find any patient is having fever, this gives me information that the immune status of the person is very good because certain inflammatory molecules are being thrown into the body and the circulation are produced and that's the reason of the fever. Now, we commonly find 
in elderly very elderly population those who actually develop pneumonia not talking of covid now pneumonia in elderly detected without fever and that not a good a good thing because you see we know that we may lose the patient because this person does not have the immunity and is not throwing the inflammatory anti inflammatory molecules in the blood to fight fight against the organism so the temperature does not kill the virus temperature is a by product here and the main thing is the chemokines or the chemicals and the anti inflammatory molecules how effective it is now the one important point i like to mention here because we have both in one side pro inflammatory molecules are being activated and secreted to fight against the infection and in the other side anti inflammatories are also being secreted because there must be a balance in between the two and then only then only the disease gets cleared up now in some cases you find that the pro inflammatory is highly active very highly active and inflammatory is anti inflammatory is less active and that in those cases actually severe inflammatory response is observed which is actually unregulated response of the body so there must be some error somewhere the tuning is being uh, wrong somewhere in the body the balance is lost and those are the cases we lose actually ultimately um, the the diet right so it is the temperature is a by product and it, it tells us the immune system is good right okay okay so i think we have answered most of the questions and still uh, yeah. i would request all the participants that you are open to ask as many questions you want so um, uh, we can will provide you a link we'll send you an email uh, and okay. for that please register uh, 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 the, uh, to this google form you will receive a certificate for attending this webinar and also you will get the opportunity to ask the questions so first of all uh, thank you uh, dr dhubujati pal for joining our initiative and cause uh, i think we have been able to succeed what we, uh, we were trying to do and we have uh, we were trying to uh, spread the awareness among people so thank you sir sure. and also thank you to professor ak de the chairman of igs future uh, chapter so without uh, your uh, contribution sir this wouldn't have been possible so now to all our participants uh, this is the link for the e certificate please register your name and other details uh, accordingly and you will receive the certificates within uh, one week of time please give us uh, one seven days at least so that we can distribute to the certificate and we are again coming up with two more uh, interesting webinars that is uh, related to geotechnical engineering on 12th of june 4 pm and 14th of june 11 am so please uh, be with us and encourage us like you always do thank you and follow us on this uh, linkedin and facebook pages and if you have any queries you can send us the email to this email address so thank you thank you everyone for joining okay thank you thank you